Well, hello everyone and happy Valentine's Day. I've got a Valentine's Day surprise for you. This is a pop-up Valentine's Day live stream. And before I get going, I just want to make sure I can find you right here on my home page. And there it is, there I am, surprise. So I'm just making sure I can read the chat thread. Now, I know it's going to take a few minutes for people to find me. So before I get into making a chocolate dessert, for you for Valentine's Day. I want to say hello. It is great to be back right here on Oh Yum doing a live stream. And this is a bit of a rehearsal. The last time I did a live stream was back in August. Since then, you've probably seen my Fall Favorites series that came out from October through December. But I'm thrilled to announce that we will be back with live streams starting Thursdays. Um, we've got two scheduled for February, two for March, and I am calling this Oh Yum 201. Remember Oh Yum 101 when I handled a lot of basics, making scones, making pie dough, learning the essential cheesecake. Well, with Oh Yum 201, we are going to take it up a notch. And because I know you are such amazing bakers and that you want to learn that next level of baking information, well, I'm here to handle your questions and I'm checking out the thread just to see, oh, there we've got people joining us up early in Australia uh, and Indonesia and about the same time here in Brazil. Um, so some of you have already moved on from Valentine's Day. Some, it's still Valentine's Day. So. It's a thrill to be here, and I think I'll start this recipe. So, I am making today just something simple to get me back into practice, doing a live stream and connecting with you. I'm making a milk chocolate and orange mousse. So this milk mousse is a little bit milder and fluffier than a traditional chocolate mousse that is made using semi-sweet or bittersweet chocolate. It's not necessarily sweeter, it's just milder. And that way, whether you add orange or your own flavoring, that secondary flavor can really come through in this simple, simple mousse recipe. So the first thing I have now, and of course, let me just take a moment to introduce everyone. If you've joined my live streams before, then you know that my sweetie, my own very Valentine, uh, Michael is behind the cameras and we've got four cameras happening. So you're looking at me through the main camera. Then we've got the secondary camera. Michael's going to switch on over that focuses on all the ingredients here, or he can find me if I have a little side joke or something funny to say. Um, and then we've got the overhead cam, which will show you that sort of social media view we're used to seeing. And then the final cam is the chocolate cam over by the stove where you'll see that delicious chocolate melting. So I just want to see, oh, we've got people from Mexico and Mexico City, Thunder Bay, Singapore. I love this. This is what I missed about live streams. The fact that you're joining me from around the world is just amazing. So as I get going, don't forget, I like to get your baking questions. Um, so we're going to start off with our 10 ounces, 300 grams of milk chocolate. Now these are callets or callettes. So while they look like the type of chocolate chip that you would stir into a chocolate chip cookie, this is actually baking or couverture chocolate. So it's meant to be melted and worked into recipes. And you know, I'll be honest, there aren't a whole lot of recipes that call for couverture milk chocolate. It's quite often used in the candy making world. So I'm thrilled to be able to have a use for it today. So if you're using a block of chocolate and chopping it up, uh, chop it quite finely. Milk chocolate melts at a lower temperature than dark chocolate, but we do want to melt it gently. So we're going to move over to the chocolate cam and put this chocolate on and you'll see I've got a pot with just about an inch of water that's barely bubbling. And I'm going to set the chocolate in a metal bowl because that way it conducts the heat well. Um, and I'm just going to actually let the heat do the work for a minute. 
for that quantity of chocolate, it can take a few minutes for the heat to get through. So I'll let the bowl warm up and it's actually the warmth of the bowl that's melting the chocolate, which is why using a metal bowl is best. Quite often you'll have seen me on other videos right here on Oh Yum, use a glass bowl. Uh, you have to make sure you use a tempered glass bowl because the heat can actually crack it. Uh, but the reason I use that is so you can see through it, through the cameras. Um, but a metal bowl is actually preferable. For this quantity of chocolate, I don't recommend using the microwave. You would have to set the microwave to a medium, not a high heat, and stop every five to 10 seconds to stir the chocolate. And honestly, it would take about the same amount of time as just popping it on the water bath. Now, while the chocolate is melting, and I will give it a stir now and again, uh, we have to get our milk ready. Because making a mousse is not, while it's a simple recipe, it's not quite as simple as melting in chocolate, cooling it, and folding in whipped cream. Um, it won't have the right flavor, the texture, the structure. It'll ac actually be too rich and too dense. So what I have here is half a cup, so 125 ml of just regular 2% milk. And what I want to do is soften just a little bit of gelatin, half a teaspoon. That's, I mean, that's one and a quarter grams if you want to measure it. But you have to bloom gelatin before you use it. So you want to make sure your milk is cold and you just sprinkle the gelatin right on top of the milk and you just let it sit for a minute. It won't dissolve into the milk because the milk's cold, but it'll soften the gelatin so when you do heat it, it melts quickly and evenly. And you don't even have to bring it up to a boil. Now, I just want to say, oh, hello from France, um, Virginia, El Salvador, Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, palm trees, beaches, and sunshine. That would be really nice right now. Here in Niagara, I live just outside of Toronto um, in Canada. And what was it, Michael? Minus 17 today? Minus 12. Minus 12. Oh, the high was minus 12 Celsius. It was a little frosty and we've had a lot of snow here. So, oh, the thought of a beach is just heavenly. Oh, and from California too and the Philippines. Oh, it's great to see everybody. Thank you for letting me know where you're watching from because it, this is a, just such a wonderful opportunity to connect. Oh, and hello, Texas. I lived in Texas very briefly, um, right, right not far from Austin. Okay, back to the mousse mixture. Um, I've got my milk and in this amount of time the gelatin is blooming. Um, if you do not want to use gelatin in this recipe, your substitution is the same measurement, so half a teaspoon of agar powder. Agar agar powder, which is a seaweed, and it behaves exactly as gelatin. The key difference is how you treat it in a recipe. So a gelatin, once it goes into the milk, blooms, and then it is heated on low heat, it will dissolve. Agar agar has to come to a full simmer to fully activate and thicken. So that's the only difference to keep in mind if you're making that substitution. And hello, Julia, watching from Canada. Wonderful. And May too is joining us. Now, this is the point. Because we are going to heat the milk, this is the point where you have an opportunity to add some flavor. I've opted for a little bit of orange zest to go with the milk chocolate. I love that combination. And I know there are people who just are not fond of that combination, but that's absolutely fine. This would be a great opportunity to add maybe a little chai spice. You could add a little instant espresso powder if you wanted a stronger taste. How about a flavored tea, like an Earl Grey tea with the milk chocolate? would just be absolutely amazing. Or uh, simply a pinch of cinnamon. Now the one thing you don't have to add to the milk, and you know how much I love baking with vanilla, but vanilla isn't needed in this recipe because milk chocolate has vanilla added to it. So that flavor I find comes through. Chocolate desserts made with bittersweet and dark often have vanilla added, but you don't really need to with milk chocolate. I'm gonna grate in a little of the orange zest while I'm chit-chatting. And then I'm gonna go check on this chocolate. So it'll be time for the chocolate fan. Oh, Hessin, I'm glad uh, I could answer your agar agar question for you. Um, and I will repeat it again. So if you're just joining us, 
Uh, I am making a milk chocolate orange mousse, and it's a really simple recipe. I'll set that aside. So that was a very large orange I had. The recipe calls for the zest of one orange. That would be an orange that is much, much smaller. So we're looking for about one to two teaspoons to really draw out that orange flavor. Now over to the chocolate cam. You can see how the heat from the bowl has melted around the outside of the chocolate. So now when you stir, it barely takes any time. So isn't it nice to know you don't have to babysit your chocolate. You don't have to stand in front of it. Unless you're making lovely heart-shaped candies for your Valentine, in which you do have to pay attention to the temperature of your chocolate. But we just need to make sure it's melted at this point. Now, a great little tip is when you're melting chocolate, um, it's a good idea to actually pull it from the heat before it has completely melted because the carryover heat of the chocolate will continue to melt what is left uh, in the chocolate. And so, you know, if it's going to sit, since this has to cool for a little bit, it will keep war itself warm and finish melting. I mean, one of the reasons we love chocolate so much is because it melts on the tip of our tongue. It melts at a lower temperature than body temperature. It melts at a lower temperature than butter. It's no wonder we love it, and especially around Valentine's Day. So one last peek at the chocolate cam. So you can see how there are still just a few small pieces of chocolate in there. That means it's ready to take off the heat. And I'm just going to give the bottom of my bowl a dry. It's a good habit when you're working with chocolate to keep any water droplets away from it. If any water droplets were to get inside the chocolate, it could potentially separate and seize the chocolate. So giving the bowl a little dry fixes that. Now I'm going to take the milk. The gelatin only needs a minute or so to bloom inside the milk and the orange. And I want to heat this up. And while the milk only has to heat up on low, to melt the gelatin, I do want to give it a minute just so that the orange flavor can heat up. That's why I added the orange to the milk and not to the chocolate. So that way the milk will absorb that orange flavor. So when it's all mixed together, that orange flavor just comes through smoothly and easily, not in little zesty pieces. We want this to be a smooth, creamy, decadent dessert. Oh, someone's happy it's Valentine's Day. Look at all those hearts and roses. That's wonderful. Cherry! <laughs> no, this is a different cherry. We've got a new cherry from Fort Lauderdale. Um, hello, nice to meet you, Cherry. I thought it was our... We've had a follower, Cherry, who has been, I th think, with us since the very first live stream. Ch cherry from Florida. I'm not sure how long you've been watching, but we're glad you're here. This is fantastic. And we've got Mexico and choo choo choo, and we've got some updates. Oh, uh, Queenie, you're asking what kind of milk did I use? That was 2% milk. And depending on what country you're in, you, your milk fat content may be fine. You can use anything from, say, 1% and higher, and you'll be absolutely fine. Don't use skim milk because that's like adding water to the milk, but 1% and higher is absolutely fine. Um, choo choo choo, and any. Yes, and uh, I'm not sure if it's Jamie or Jaime. The flavor reminds you of the Terry orange slices. That's what I was going for with this combination. I didn't want to say it, but you said it. Okay, I'm going to give my milk a little stir. And so my heat is on a medium right now. Really, you don't need anything higher than medium when you're melting gelatin. But a reminder, if you're using agar agar, you want to do it on medium to medium high and wait until you see bubbles break the surface of the milk and then that agar will thicken. So I've got some steam. I'll shut off the heat and I'll bring this back. Now it's time to pour the hot milk into the warm chocolate. So both ingredients are a similar temperature. If I were to add cold milk to melted chocolate, <gasps> the chocolate would start resetting again and separate. And if my milk was boiling, actually, this is a great tip. If you are using agar, 
pull it off the heat, let it cool for two to three minutes before you add the chocolate. Chocolate does not uh, respond well to extreme temperature changes. So equal temperatures are generally the rule. And I'm just going to use a whisk now to combine my chocolate and milk. And it's only, almost gonna look like a ganache. And when I'm making a ganache, when you add whipping cream to chocolate, usually use a, you should use a spatula, not a whisk. But that's because you've got two ingredients with a high fat content. But because we're adding milk, we're actually lowering the content of this end result. So a whisk is okay. And look at that, how shiny and smooth. Make sure you get all that chocolate around the outside. But now, this is still very, very warm. So I don't want to fold cold whipped cream into it because two things could happen. It could separate again, but guaranteed that cream will melt. So fortunately, even though this was a bit of a surprise uh, Valentine's pop-up live stream, I do have some chocolate already cooled. I did this just before we went live. So that means it sat for about 15 minutes or so. And you can tell it has thickened up a little bit, but not set. You still want it to be just a little bit above room temperature because if it sits too long, that gelatin will actually start to set. And then you won't have a smooth mousse when you fold everything together. So we're still fluid here, so we're absolutely fine. And now it's time to whip the cream. But before that, I wanna take a little peek. It's so nice to see everyone saying hello on this thread. I can't believe it. This is great that we have, did you know, Michael, we have over 200 people oh. joining us and we didn't even announce it. So if you, if you signed in in the last couple of minutes, this is our big rehearsal because the live streams are coming back. We will be back with Oh Yum 201 starting this Thursday, 12 noon Eastern time. And we have such a treat in store for you. So where Oh Yum 101 was about the basics, Oh Yum 201 is stepping it up a little bit because I know you're ready to step up your baking game. Uh, lots of hearts. Oh, there's Juna. Okay. Juna has joined us for live streams before, probably just getting up right now. Uh, and happy Valentine's Day to everyone who is joining me from this side of the planet because it's still Valentine's Day here. Now I have one cup or 250 ml of whipping cream in the mixer, so I'm just gonna whip this up to a soft peak. That'll take a second. You know, it gets a little noisy. So I'll say hello to you from Lebanon and Chile. Uh, Oh, good question. Gail is asking, can you use semi-sweet chocolate in this recipe? Yes, you can. The one thing to change in the recipe, take out the gelatin. You don't need it. Dark chocolate has more of a set to it. So you get the same creamy texture making this same recipe and reduce your dark chocolate to eight ounces. So 240 grams, as opposed to the 300 grams from the milk chocolate. So make those two changes and you'll have a beautiful semi-sweet chocolate mousse. Oh, fantastic. Oh my God, Chris, Chrissy has been watching my show since, uh, that, that's almost the beginning of the Food Network here in Canada that I've been on. Oh, I better pay attention to my cream getting a little carried away here. And you know that fix, if you happen to accidentally over whip your whipped cream, if you tend to do it a lot, you'll know to hold back uh, about two, say, say you're whipping a cup of whipping cream, hold back two tablespoons, whip your cream. If you happen to over whip it, where it loses that sort of smooth, cre fluffy, creamy look to it and starts getting sort of almost lumpy looking, pour in that reserved cream, or if you have a bigger container, pour in a little extra, and then just whisk this by hand, and it'll break down the fat again and become smooth. So this is why you wanna come back to these live streams. These little tips that may not make the recipe, but are little bits of wisdom that I wanna share with you. And this is just so great fun. Mm. We've got, oh, and we've got Carlos watching uh, from El Gourmet in Mexico. Just taking a look at the consistency of my cream. I am good. 
So now what I want to do, I've got my cream whipped and it would be easy you would think to fold the chocolate into the cream because I have a nice big bowl, but you always want to fold the light ingredient into the heavier ingredient, not the other way around. So I'm going to take my cool chocolate and just put it into a bigger bowl. That way I have space to fold. And when it's time to add the cream, you do it in two additions. The cream isn't as fragile as egg whites, but something you'll notice when you start folding in the cream, you'll watch it actually deflate a little bit. And I don't want you to panic because that's factored into the recipe. By the time I'm done folding, this mousse will actually be quite fluid. So this is not the style of mousse, even though it has a little bit of gelatin, it's not the style of mousse that you would use as a filling for a mousse cake or if you're serious into baking and you're making entremet, you know, those molded cakes with the mousse and then the cake and the gelée in the middle and then mirror glaze poured on top of it. This is not the mousse recipe. This is the kind meant to be enjoyed in a cup or in a glass. It's not even of the consistency you can pipe it. But this is why I wanted to pick a really easy recipe to get back into the swing of things for live streams. So, I still had a few streaks in my mousse base before I added the remaining cream because I know I have this next opportunity to continue folding and working it in until it's nicely combined. It might be tempting for you to put your chocolate base into the fridge to cool it down faster, but don't do it because it'll set the chocolate on the outside before the inside has cooled and you will find you may not end up with a nice smooth mousse. But you can see you've kind of got that lighter color. You can tell I, this is a milk chocolate mousse. It's a little lighter than a dark chocolate mousse, which is a little richer. But this is, um, this is that flavor and texture I'm after. And you'll notice I didn't add any extra sugar to the recipe. It doesn't need it. That milk chocolate with the hint of orange is just right. Now I'll leave it up to you. You can stop right here, or if you want to add a couple tablespoons of orange liqueur, you can stir that in just to bolster the orange flavor. But as I said earlier, if you're customizing this mousse to your own flavor, say Earl Grey tea, or we talked about chai spices, a pinch of cinnamon, you just skip that. You don't have to add that at all. It's just an add-in for the very, very end. And now we're ready to portion up and pour that mousse. So you can see it's got a fluffiness, but it actually is quite fluid. And just to let you know, even though this was a surprise live stream for you as a little Valentine's gift, this recipe will be posted uh, right here on the channel so you can come back. And as you know, with all of my recipe videos, the recipes follow just below the screen. And if you're new to Oh Yum, hello, thank you for joining us. You have to subscribe because we have so many new things coming down the pipeline. And I wish I had a pitcher big enough because it's actually easier to pour, but you can understand why I wouldn't put this into a piping bag because it would just run right out and I would have chocolate mousse everywhere. So how's that for framing, Michael? Is that okay? You got a good overhead shot? Before my ladle gets too messy, I'm gonna pour my ladle into my individual glasses. So you just find what you have. You don't want anything with too narrow an opening. And then you can give the mousse a little shake so that any detail on the top from ladling in the mousse settles into place. The portioning is up to you. You can do mini portions or nice big portions. Got a little drip on the side of that one. So giving the glass a little shake, settles it in place. I just can't, I can't help myself have to get rid of that little mark. 
There we go. Uh, I have one more glass to fill. I can feel the cold from this cream is actually setting this mousse as I speak. So you don't want to take too, too long. Where I did that one. And so you can see the detail here on the top from where I, the ladle left droplets. This is what I mean. You can give the mousse a little shake. It levels it off, but it doesn't collapse the mousse at all. And then you, I've just got some ramekins. This leaves you more surface area that if you wanted to put fresh fruit on top, little candied orange peel tells you it's orange flavored. Or if you've got some candy hearts. Hey, I, we had some candy hearts kicking around here. Do you know where they went? You know, because it's Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. I think these are cherry flavored, or that's what they're supposed to be. So this makes, I find, six average size portions, but you can definitely get more if you're making more dainty portions. Now, if I put a candy on, a Valentine's candy, it might sink to the bottom. Ideally, what you want to do is to let these chill. The recipe says at least three hours. That's to be safe. Uh, 90 minutes to two hours, at least know, you know you've got the top will be set. So if you wanted to set something on top as a garnish. Yeah, see, if you were putting fresh raspberries on, you would want to wait until the mousse was set. These are just starting to press in a little bit, so I won't do any more. This has been amazing. Oh, Captain Otis is going to try my puff pastry recipe. That is great to see. Uh, so glad to have... Oh, and Hassan is asking, could I use orange essential oil for cooking instead of orange liqueur? Yes, you could. You can skip the uh, orange liqueur. That is just a flavor add-in. If you don't have oranges, orange essential oil is fine to add. You don't have to add it to the milk. You can add it when you're folding it in. Just remember, essential oil is very, very strong and very concentrated. So only a couple of drops will be needed. Great question to ask. And uh, this is, oh, and Dini, great idea to do some grated chocolate right on top. Again, after the mousse has set, whether it's a block of dark milk or white or a mix. Um, oh, Michael's checking in our cabinet to see if we have any. All we have are the callets that are meant for melting. Uh, and Christine is asking to see a recipe that is American that the UK would not have. Mm hmm. Well, sticky toffee pudding is definitely not that. I'll have to think on that one. I love getting these questions. And just as a, well, key lime pie. Oh, and Cherry from Fort Lauderdale is probably very well acquainted with key lime pie. Um, I've had some good ones on visits down there. And to do, do, do Christmas shortbread recipe. Oh, Chrissy, thank you. I'm so glad you like that. What? Uh, is special about these live streams is exactly this. You have me for usually it's 45 minutes to an hour and I am here to answer your baking questions which is what makes a live stream so special and a little bit different than the average taped video. Um, so it's my pleasure to be back with Oh Yum 201 starting this Thursday and the recipe will soon be revealed. But don't forget, when we post the link on the community page, the recipe itself will appear. So if you want to even bake along with me, you can. Um, but we are back with live streams. And just to introduce you to Sandra and Rob, who are behind the scenes, uh, watching the chat thread, making sure we're doing everything technically correct, uh, thank you to Rob and Sandra for being here today. And of course, my very own Valentine, Michael, is behind the camera. And so thank you for joining me for this little surprise Valentine's uh, live stream. And I will see you on Thursday for Oh Yum 201. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I should eat a taste. <laughs> it hasn't set, but... Oh, yeah.
Mm -hmm. And once it's cold, mm, so fluffy and nice. <laughs> Enjoy, everyone. See you Thursday.